Hello everyone! I hope that wasn't too loud for everyone, as uh, some of you who are using the headsets say, uh, say I'm killing you with uh, these uh, intros. Uh, but uh, hope, hope that one was better, as today is a rest day in the candidates in Berlin. I thought it was a nice opportunity to check out another game from the Talbotinik series. So this is game 8, and uh, in the previous 7 games Tal managed to win 3 games and uh, four games were drawn and even though uh, Tal is leading uh, in this match by three points, Tal says that he still doesn't feel very comfortable, uh, he still feels he's not uh, up to his full form in this uh, match and he still feels uh, that it's actually Botvinnik who's dictating the tone of the battle for, for, the, for the entire match so far. And he says that uh, although being up uh, three points is basically like you won the match, he says not really, not, not against a player like Botvinnik. Uh, because it's not like being uh, up three points in a tournament. In a tournament you can lose a game, maybe someone who is catching up to you will also lose their game. Uh, but in a match if you lose a game it means your opponent won a game. So uh, that, uh, if he wins one or two games uh, the th things can immediately change. So uh, here uh, Tal and uh, his second Alexander Koblenz, they decided to do something crazy. Uh, they decided that Tal will play uh, a crazy game in game 8, he will go all out and if he wins one more game uh, then being up 4 points that's basically you won the match. And if he loses one game it's, it's not that terrible. Uh, so uh, this is game 8, let's see what happens. And the Botvinnik already surprises Tal from move 1, uh, he plays d4. So not his usual c4, uh, he plays d4, which means the gloves are off, uh, Tal can go for any def defense he wants to, and Botvinnik is up for a game. Uh, so Tal goes knight to f6, we have c4, e6, knight to f3, uh, Botvinnik isn't interested in the Nimzo Indian defense, he employs knight f3, the so-called anti-Nimzo Indian, and uh, here Tal has, Tal could go b6, go for some Queen's Indian defense, go for d5, the Queen's Gambit declined, uh, but he doesn't want a passive game, he wants, uh, he wants to make uh, things happen, so he goes for c5. Uh, we have d5, e captures on d5, c captures on d5, and g6. And although uh, I, in the database this is... Uh, referred to as the Benoni, uh, Tal refers to this as just a King's Indian defense, as he says all of those defenses are basically King's Indian defense. Uh, knight to c3 and bishop to g7. Here Tal says that uh, black can go for some immediate complications with b5, and uh, if he does go b5, he's not afraid of knight captures, he's a... Uh, uh, happy to mix the things up uh, straight from the start, uh, but uh, the variation he doesn't want to go into after b5 is actually e4, as he saw one game that was played like this and he really liked it for white, uh, because after b4 white can reply e5, and after pawn captures, pawn captures, uh, th there is this idea that after queen captures on f6, uh, white can go bishop to g5, and after queen to d6, now even play bishop to c4. So white would get insane development. And after c captures on b2, white can even just castle. And uh, white is basically fully developed, and uh, black uh, can't even grab the rook uh, on a1. If he grabs it, then it's all over. Queen captures, and uh, there are, there's no defense. Queen is threatening to capture the rook on h8. Once you move it, then rook e1 simply wins the game. Uh, bishop to e7, you simply capture it, and you have to give up the queen. If you move the queen, then you're getting checkmated. Bishop d6, check, king moves, queen to f6, uh, this is checkmate. So, uh, regardless how, I mean, this game could play out in a lot of ways, but this is one that Tal saw, and uh, he didn't like b5 immediately. So he plays bishop to g7, uh, we have bishop to g5, and uh, here we have castles by Tal. And Botvinnik plays e3, and Tal saw that uh, because uh, Tal declined uh, to play this variation with the d6, as this variation is usually played with d6, uh, instead of this uh, bishop to g5 move, Botvinnik should have tried and punished uh, Tal's uh, uh, insolence of not playing d6 by immediately pushing, uh, uh, instead of bishop d to g5, by immediately pushing e4. And now it's uh, it's uh, very dangerous uh, f for black to, for black to castle and e5 is coming, uh, but okay. Botanic decided not to do this. Botanic played bishop to g5. We have castles and now e3. And Tal says this is a a small victory for black, but a victory nevertheless, uh, because now uh, white can't go for the standard setup by playing e4, uh, because now black has rook to e8. White's king is still in the center of the board. Now you can't go e5 because of d6. 
uh, the king is still on e1. And uh, if you try the standard idea of bringing this knight to d2 to defend this, maybe bring it to c4 in the future, uh, then Tal wins the game with knight captures on e4. And there is basically no defense against all of the threats. Uh, point being that if you capture the queen, then knight captures on c3, opens up a discovered check from the rook. Uh, you have to block it now, knight captures queen, rook captures, and after rook captures bishop on d8, uh, basically black is up a whole piece. Uh, so, okay, after castles, Botanic played e3, uh, we have rook to e8, and now knight to d2. Uh, Tal says that uh, the idea of this early rook to e8, the reason why he didn't play d6, is that he wanted to, uh, after after white moves this knight to d2, uh, he wanted to play rook to e5. And uh, he thought that after bishop to f4, uh, he could simply capture on d5, sacrifice the exchange, and after knight captures, knight captures, uh, white would either have to give up uh, another pawn, the b2 pawn, or he would defend it, and then uh, Tal would grab this nice dark square bishop on f4, uh, and considering the position uh, to be fully fully uh, compensated uh, for the exchange. Uh, but the reason Tal didn't do it is because uh, this rook to e5, uh, he, he feared bishop to h4. And now after g5, bishop to g3, uh, rook captures on d5, also giving up the exchange, knight captures, knight captures. Uh, it's not really uh, good for black, it's actually bad for black, because now after knight to c4, uh, the uh, white opens up an attack on this knight on d5, and after knight to e7, knight to d6, and this is a, this is a monster position for white. So after knight to d2, Tal refrains from going rook to e5, he finally plays d6. Uh, we have bishop to e2, uh, we have a6, preparing b5, Botvinnik stops it with a4, uh, knight b to d7, and now Botvinnik castles. Uh, we have queen to c7, uh, with the idea that, of course, Stal wants to unpin here, now this knight can move, and also he wants to push c4 at the right moment. Uh, here, queen to c2, uh, not going for the immediate e4, although Tal considers e4 to be a better, but, uh, you know, you, you play d3, you don't want to waste another tempo, tempo by playing e4. And here Tal plays knight to b6. And uh, this is the idea of the quote above the board, as uh, Tarash says, uh, a knight is always badly posted on this square, talking about the b6 square. Uh, but Tal says that this is maybe one example wh where it's actually not. Uh, because the knight isn't planning to stay on b6 uh, for a very long time, he just uses the tempo on the d5 pawn uh, to, to remaneuver it. Uh, here, bishop to f3. Uh, if Botvinnik would now play e4, then Tal could actually play knight captures on d5. Uh, and after e captures, uh, bishop captures on c3, queen captures and rook captures on e2, and it's a perfectly fine position for black. So, after this knight to b6, uh, bishop to f3 which was one of the ideas of bishop to e2. Uh, and here Tal plays c4. Uh, Tal again considered a move like rook to e5, uh, as he really liked this move. Uh, but again, after bishop to f4 attacking the rook, rook to f5, and now queen to b3, uh, there really is no reason for that rook to stay there. Uh, the queen defends uh, the d5 pawn nicely. Uh, this rook will get... Uh, will be trapped at some point, and uh, if black decides to play c4 to kick away the queen, then queen to a3, and now it's actually black uh, that's in trouble. Uh, so, okay, after bishop to f3, Tal refrains again from rook to e5, he goes uh, c4, uh, and now Botvinnik decides to give up his dark square bishop, but to, gr to win a pawn. Uh, bishop captures on f6, bishop captures on f6, and now a5 simply kicking away the defender of the c4 pawn, knight to d7, and now knight to e4. Uh, attacking Tal's bishop on f6, and also now there's a double attack uh, here on the c4 pawn, there's no way to defend it. Uh, Tal played bishop to e5, simply preserving the bishop, uh, and here comes queen captures on c4, offering a trade of queens. Uh, it's, a, it's a better move than knight captures on c4. If knight cap captures on c4, then Tal can break through with b5. A captures, knight captures, the knight can't move, uh, the queen is undefended on c2. Uh, this would be okay for black. So, uh, queen captures on c4, immediately Botvinnik offers a trade of queens. We have queen to d8, and Tal says that uh, this is the position he saw when he decided uh, to give up uh, the extra pawn. Uh, 
queen to a2 by Botvinnik. And here in this position, when the queen was still on c4, uh, Tal's idea was simply pushing b5. And now Botvinnik played queen to a2. Uh, he doesn't want to allow b5 to come with, with a tempo on the queen. Uh, and uh, now Tal, for some reason, doesn't play b5. b5 is, again, regardless of the fact that the queen isn't on c4, uh, after b5, a captures, knight captures, uh, Tal makes room for all of his pieces to get developed, and more importantly, uh, this knight on b6 is preventing the knight on d2 from creating a very nice outpost on c4. Uh, but, for some reason, after Botanik played queen to e2, Tal played f5. And uh, this will prove to be uh, not so smooth as uh, Tal thought it would be. Uh, knight to c3, uh, we have g5 now, and uh, here Botvinnik is, is, isn't afraid of Tal's adva advancement on the king side. Uh, he is simply preparing to bring this knight to c4, this knight to a4, and then to b6, and to completely dominate the queen side. Uh, so, knight to c4, but Tal pushes forward g4, as they did agree to this before the game. Uh, bishop to e2, and now queen to f6. Uh, knight to a4, preparing knight to b6. Uh, we have king to h8, uh, getting the king out of this uh, diagonal that the queen is uh, eyeing, and also maybe making uh, room for the rook on g8 in the future. Uh, g3, uh, h5, and now f4. And Tal was very impressed by this f4 move by Botvinnik, as it uh, immediately requires a reaction from Tal. Uh, here, Tal played bishop to d4, simply not allowing uh, this bishop to be captured, because then rook captures on e2, this would be an extremely uh, active rook. Uh, so, queen to a3. Now, uh, there's a double attack on the d6 pawn, and Tal has to do something here. And uh, Botvinnik is also threatening knight to b6, uh, attacking this rook. Also, this will force uh, Tal to exchange this knight. And Tal doesn't want to exchange this knight, so Tal plays rook to b8. Seems like a passive move, but uh, Tal thinks that it, it was really necessary. Uh, so, Botvinnik goes knight uh, 8 to b6 regardless. And here Tal says that Botvinnik uh, had a better move. Uh, a better move uh, with the idea of playing e captures on d4, grabbing that bishop. And simply, uh, if rook captures on e2, then rook a to d1, first defending the d pawn, d4 pawn, uh, and after h4, uh, knight to c3, attacking the rook on e2, and after the rook moves, now queen captures on d6. Queen captures, knight captures, and with two extra pawns, uh, white pieces being, not, black pieces not being very well developed, uh, white would have a great advantage here. Uh, but okay, Botvinnik has his own idea of what he's doing, he plays knight to b6, uh, and we have h4. Uh, here, uh, Botvinnik plays uh, rook a to d1. Uh, again, idea of capturing the bishop on d4 was possible, but now Botvinnik forces it back. Uh, bishop captures, pawn captures, and here knight to c5 by Tal. Uh, g captures on h4, and uh, here Botvinnik saw that if queen captures on h4, uh, then queen can come to c3 with check, uh, after the king moves, queen can come to e1, and th this will be fine for Botvinnik. Uh, so, after this, g captures on h4, Tal played bishop to d7. Uh, and uh, bishop to d7 is an okay move, but Tal prefers knight to e4, simply not, not allowing Botvinnik to trade queens. Uh, but okay, uh, bishop to d7, and now Botvinnik plays queen to c3 and forces a trade of queens. Uh, queen captures, pawn captures, and here bishop to b5. Uh, this is still uh, a good move, and rook f to e1 now. Uh, defending the bishop on e2, and if Tal captures uh, the knight, then bishop can capture, and the e3 pawn is also defended. Uh, we have knight to e4, and here uh, Botvinnik plays rook to c1. A better move was rook to d4, but he misses, uh, he misses Tal's move. And here... Uh, Tal actually has a winning game, he just has to play the correct move, uh, and in this position Tal played rook to c8, which is the winning move, unfortunately for Tal, uh, Tal played the wrong rook to c8. The correct move was uh, this rook to c8, but he played rook b to c8, and uh, you'll see, uh, we'll return to this position to check out why it doesn't work. Uh, here Tal saw uh, that he's winning the exchange, and he immediately thought that he was winning the game, and it was actually Botvinnik who was in time trouble in this game, but Tal says for some reason uh, this uh, uh, quick play by Botvinnik affected his play as well. So he played rook b to c8, and now Botvinnik played knight to a5. So okay, uh, 
bishop captures on e2, rook captures on e2, and now knight captures on c3. And now you can see that Tal wins the exchange, whatever Botvinnik plays. Uh, if he doesn't move the rook, then simply Tal will capture it. Uh, if he moves it, then Tal will play knight to e2 check and pick up uh, the c1 rook. So uh, Botvinnik saves ta uh, Tal the trouble. Uh, he plays rook captures on c3, rook captures on c3, and knight captures on b7. Uh, here, rook captures on e3. Uh, and uh, Tal says that this was probably the last chance for him to play rook to b8, uh, simply kick away this knight and uh, try and win the b6 pawn uh, to maybe hold a draw. Uh, but he played rook captures on e3, he thought this was still winning, but now Botvinnik simply exchanged, and after rook captures and the knight captures on d6, uh, you do have you do have a uh, you're up the exchange, but uh, Botvinnik has a passed B pawn that's already on B6 and a passed D pawn. So uh, here Tal played Rook to D3, and uh, here the game was adjourned. Botvinnik uh, had uh, had to make one more move for the game to be adjourned, and Botvinnik studied this position uh, for half an hour before uh, deciding on what move he will play tomorrow when the game is adjourned. And uh, feel free to pause this position, find the winning move for Botvinnik, and, uh, you know, uh, check out your, your own endgame skills. And uh, don't feel too bad if you if you don't find uh, the, the move immediately. After all, Botvinnik did think about it for half an hour. Uh, so do pause the video if you'd like to, maybe even come back to it later. Uh, but okay, for those of you who did find it, I mean, congratulations. It's really not a simple move to find. And for those of you who want to enjoy the show... Uh, here Tal thought that Botvinnik would have to play b7 and after rook and after pawn to b7 rook to b3 uh, there really uh, isn't any, any way for white to win this game uh, but unfortunately for Tal uh, Botvinnik played rook, uh, knight to f7 check and here when Tal saw this he immediately resigned the game uh, why did he resign? Were, well, a couple of reasons uh, first of all if you move the king to h7 uh, then simply pawn to d6, the knight is guarding the pawn, if you attack the knight then simply b7 is coming, uh, if you try and stop it then d7 is coming and the rook cannot stop both pass pawns. And on the other hand after knight to f7 check uh, it doesn't matter, king to g7 and king to g8 both lose to the same strategy, uh, if you go king to g7 then b7 is coming, you have to block it, rook to b3, uh, now comes knight to d8. Uh, preventing uh, rook from capturing the b7 pawn and now this is the idea you had to see uh, after a5 now Tal will start pushing his own pawn uh, d6 a4 d7 a3 now Botvinnik would have this in between check a knight to e6 check and now it doesn't matter what uh, what black plays if king to g6 then simply queen comes into the game uh, and after a couple of checks now you can e you can either start uh, checking the white king but the white king uh, will always find an escape uh, and escape all the checks and if you play a2 then simply h5 and you're getting checkmated if you capture the pawn then queen g5 is checkmate and if you don't you're getting checkmated nevertheless so yeah after this knight to f7 move uh, Tal resigned the game and game number 8 goes to Botvinnik and uh, it's no longer a 3 point lead for Tal, it's 2 point lead for now, uh, Tal now and the match continues. Uh, but like I said uh, we will return to that uh, famous moment in the game after Botvinnik played this rook to c1 move I told you that rook to c8 was winning but that Tal played the wrong rook to c8. Uh, had Tal played rook uh, e to c8 then he would indeed win the game. Uh, because now, after knight to a5, now the Tal's idea is working. Uh, simply bishop captures, rook captures, and knight captures on c3. Now, there's no point in playing rook captures on c3, like Botvinnik played in the game, because after rook captures, you can't capture the b7 pawn. The rook is protecting it. So here, you'd have to play king to f1, simply protecting the rook. Uh, and after knight captures, king cap uh, rook captures with check, rook captures, and now you, you don't have the opportunity to capture the b7 pawn. You have to capture the knight or you'll be down a piece. Uh, so king captures and now rook to c5 is winning. You can give up the b7 pawn, knight captures, and now rook captures on d5. So now you're up the exchange, but white only has the passed b pawn, not the passed uh, b pawn, d pawn, and uh, the eliminated uh, <laughs> black's d6 pawn. But yeah, uh, instead of rook uh, e to c8, he played rook b to c8, and unfortunately for Tal, uh, game 8 goes to Mikhail Botvinnik. 
uh, but a well-deserved game. So that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Locutus the Bork for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, you are one of the first, if not the first contributor to this channel. So I'm very pleased you are still enjoying the content. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, in the in the description below, uh, there's a link to the 1959 Candidates Tournament if you are new to this channel or new to this series. So you can check out uh, all the games that Tal won to, to win the, the honor of uh, challenging Mikhail Botvinnik. And also there are some very interesting games there. And also there will be a playlist uh, of all the games I've covered from the 1960 World Chess Championship match of Tal versus Botvinnik. So thank you all and I will see you soon.